gods, he is almost whole again. His size is staggering. I can scarce imagine how Grandfather stood against such a monstrosity. This cannot be allowed to proceed any further. Let us disable the coil and move on. Grandfather? No, that man is dead. I will not dishonor my beloved grandsire's memory by calling you such. You are but his twisted shape, the thrall of a mad primal. You were foolish to disregard my warning, child. Are you so convinced of your own righteousness? Tis the rightness of our path that led us to return. Eorzea will never be safe whilst Bahamut remains to threaten all we hold dear. What of the hero who gave his life in defense of the realm? Do you truly dispute the justice of our cause? My poor, ignorant grandchildren. Your world is shaped by naught but recent conflict. Listen, and I will speak to you of justice. Twas in the twilight of the Third Astral Era. The southern land of Merosidia suffered invasion at the hands of the Alagon Empire. With no atrocity, too depraved for their purpose, the forces of Alec were unstoppable in their advance. Desperate for salvation, the dragons prayed to one of their first brood, to their ancestor Bahamut. Infused by the power of their fervent supplications, Bahamut arose from the abyss of death and took wing as the Merosidian's newborn god. Yet this great miracle would only serve to further the maniacal designs of the dragon's imperial conquerors. The cruel fetters which bind my lord stand testament to the Alagon's boundless greed and hubris. I once summoned the Twelve in an attempt to forestall the advent of the Seventh Umbral Era. What then did the dragons of Merosidia do that I did not? Wherefore are they accursed and I exalted? Tis man's overweening belief in his own primacy that blinds him to the commonness of his condition and the truth of his own tyranny. As long as man is suffered to remain, the dragons shall never be at peace. Only when the plague of people has been expunged Shall the children of Lord Bahamut be free? Then shall the world know true justice. Stop it! Grandfather would never say such things. His belief that people were worth saving never faltered. He had faith in their strength, that they could stand together and push back against the darkness seeking to shape them. A false hope. Tis folly to place one's faith in so flawed a race. Stand together? Huh. They would first need to agree on which direction to face. If history teaches us anything, it is that man cannot find common ground between his own two feet. Even you, twins, whose veins run with the same blood, struggle to fathom each other's reasoning. 
You hide your differing agendas behind the convenient banner of Eorzea's salvation. Given your obvious self-interest, can you truly claim no kinship with the oligarch? And though I hope they might bring you closer, it would seem that the twin grimoires I bestowed upon you were a wasted gesture. There may well be truth in your judgment of Alize and me, but such a one-sided tirade, bemoaning the evils of man, rings false, coming from the lips of Archon Louisois. Tell me, do you champion the cause of dragons because Bahamut compels you as his thrall? Or is it because you yourself have transcended the limits of man's existence? Ah, so the possibility did not escape your notice. What I prayed for, what I have become, these are the keys that unlock the truth behind Eorzea's rebirth. If you would have them, then you must needs take them by force. Come! Rend this divine form asunder and claim your answers. Entity is no phantom or imposter. It is our beloved grandsire. Please, for his sake and for ours, you must defeat our grandfather. Grandfather is truly gone this time, but better it end this way than the alternative. I am yet here, Ali 
say, my dear, sweet granddaughter? Grandfather? I must thank you, warrior of light. Without your valor, I might never have broken free of Bahamut's control. These last few moments are mine, to live as the man I once was. This is all that I wanted. Yet, now that it is happening, I find myself struggling to believe it. Is it really you? Grandfather, pray forgive me my insolence. It was not my intent to demean you. Forgive you? <laughs> I am proud of you, child. You were wise enough to deduce the manner of creature I had become. Alfino, Alize, if any here should beg forgiveness, it is I. Grandfather, I must ask, will you not tell us what befell during the Calamity? Yes, yes, of course. You have come far to hear the truth. Let us then begin the tale at the Battle of Cartano, where clashed the forces of the Garlean Empire and the Eorzean Alliance. Twas there in the sky above the surging armies that the elder primal Bahamut broke free of the Red Moon Dalamut. In an effort to contain this avatar of destruction, I called upon the Twelve to aid me in the creation of a prison of ether. But Bahamut would not be caged by such feeble bars. Too vast was his might, too fierce his rage. Little choice remained to me. I used the last of my strength to entrust our hope unto the future, and prepared to meet my end.
As you have no doubt surmised, I did not perish. When the cage built from the essences of the Twelve was destroyed, the sky was filled with a colossal cloud of ether. This drifting energy responded to the prayers of those fighting below, and to my own desperate wish that the dying realm be saved by infusing me with the power of a primal. I became the immortal phoenix, ancient symbol of rebirth. Rising into the sky, I struck Bahamut with all my newfound strength. The blow shattered his earthly form, and a shower of ether rained down upon the land. Thus began the rejuvenation of Eorzea. Believing the deed done, I relinquished my hold on that staggering energy, desirous that it should be returned to the realm without delay. But I had not reckoned on Bahamut's tenacious will, even as he teetered upon the cusp of oblivion, the dragon reached out to claim me. Alas, within my vast fading form, enough remained of the Phoenix's energy to offer Bahamut a hold, and he dragged me along in his wake. And thus began your existence as the Elder Primal's thrall. I cannot help but wonder at his will to survive. Though he was all but obliterated, Bahamut found a way to seize the power you surrendered. That would explain why part of his physical form survived to be entombed underground. It would also explain why Eorzea was so terribly warped. Even as the land sought to restore itself, the returning flow of ether was cut off. Ah, very good. When his grip on existence was once again secured, Bahamut did not cease his feast until he had consumed every last mote of ether that yet floated in the air. And still he was not fully restored. You must remember that by this time, much of the freed ether had already returned to the land. That which remained was not sufficient to reconstruct so massive a form in its entirety. But there did not need to be, not for a being sustained by the marvels of Alagon technology. As long as some piece of Bahamut persists, the coils will seek it out and continue their regenerative task. The fragments of Dalamud appear motionless from the surface, but deep beneath the ground they had been searching, tunneling through rock and soil towards their escaped prisoner. And, as you have observed for yourselves, they found his heart. Warrior of Light, heed me. You must put a stop to Bahamut's regeneration. Whether it be for man or for dragonkind, the question of justice is irrelevant. The Elder Primal will leave naught but a smoldering wasteland for both his children and ours. I beg you to defend Eorzea and guide its people to the future they yet struggle to find. This portal will take you to the final internment, Hulk. Tis time for the tale of Bahamut and his part in the calamity to come to an end.
Alvino, Alize, pray, come closer. Your hopes and dreams must no longer be an extension of mine. You must needs find your own reason to fight for this realm, your own meaning in this sea of chaos. Will you do that for me? Of course, Grandfather. I have already made it my mission to see this newborn Eorzea survive and flourish. Alize, while I was yet enthralled to Bahamut, you spoke of my faith in man's strength. Know that your words reached me, imprisoned though my soul still was. So forceful was your conviction. I wonder if that belief has not become your own. Perhaps, after all your anger and sorrow was spent, you found something greater within you. See this fight to its culmination. Tis also your strength in which I have faith. Thank you for everything. Pray, take your rest, Grandfather. You deserve it. There are records of an art that allowed one to summon the power of a primal from the essence of its demise. And though I am no true primal, all that I have left, I give to you. Alvino, Alize, my darling grandchildren, may light's blessings ever keep and protect you. Come, warrior of light. Our task remains undone. It was a long and arduous road, but at last we reach its end. Farewell, Bahamut. I banish you back to the ether.
No. Is this how I honor my promise to grandfather? You must needs find your own reason to fight for this realm. Your own meaning in this sea of chaos. Will you do that for me? I will, Grandfather. In fact, I believe I already have. That reason has been with me all along. Guiding me. Eorzea's blade of light, shearing through endless shrouds of darkness. I have been shown the miraculous feats of which we are all capable. Of which I am capable. Bahamut, you have wreaked enough havoc. I will not let your wrathful fires consume all that we know and love. to hear you say that. You have found your resolve at last. Let me join my strength to yours. In this place, in this moment, our purpose has become one. Warrior of Light, you must destroy Bahamut's crystal core.
did it. But one task remains. With this last coil disabled, there shall be naught left to bind Bahamut to this world. His beloved children will finally know peace. Is done. He is truly gone. You knew, didn't you? You knew what Grandfather had become. I was not certain, but from all I had gleaned, it seemed a distinct possibility. The scene people describe of the Battle of Cartano was one of unimaginable devastation, and it is through the combined prayers of the desperate and an abundant source of ether that primals are born. I merely put two and two together. And you consider that a sufficient explanation? Well, however you stumbled across your theory, T'was this revelation that made you wary of my attachment to Grandfather. You feared that in my obsession I would fall under his primal sway. Is that why you decided to join us? To pull me back should I show signs of wavering? Pray forgive me, sister. I wished only to protect you. Yet I see now that I needn't have doubted the strength of your conviction. May I ask you a question? What do you now intend to do with the truth you have uncovered? Which particular truth was that, brother? The fact that desperate prayer gave rise to the primal phoenix? That this new god was responsible for setting Eorzea on the path to rebirth? Should such a tale become common knowledge, People would soon offer up their prayers in earnest. They would beseech Phoenix to complete the healing that was begun. Yet as you and I know all too well, the very act of calling forth this savior would do more harm to the land than good. We cannot encourage such worship for this very reason. Were Grandfather forced to return as an ether-draining primal, it would undo all that he had worked to protect. Your abiding love for him was the key that unlocked the truth of the Calamity. But keys may also serve to seal doors that were best left unopened. 
Let your love now guide your actions, and lock away deep inside the fate of both Grandfather and Bahamut. Fear not, Alfino. I understand what must be done. The realm need not know the truth for it to be saved. That the Elder Primal is banished, to return no more, that is enough. Let us make our way back to the surface. Poor Oriange must be beside himself with worry. <laughs> 